Hi, I'm Jamie Rhodes. I'm a writer and this is my desk where I create stories. This is where I do most of my work. I do sometimes go to libraries to work if I need to change scenery or um, if I'm just taking notes by pen and paper I might go work in a museum if I'm doing a story about something that's set in a particular time period um, or, or visit um, a location that is inspiring and start, so that I can sit there and do my paper based notes for a story and research in a different environment and then come back here and type it all up. Um, so, oh, that's my cat. Hey Loki. <laughs> um, so I've got the questions um, from Creative Learning Guild here. Uh, let me just have a look at them. So, where are my works shown? So, I guess this, in my particular field, refers to where you can get access to my works. So it would be any uh, bookshops, you could buy the books there, or in libraries. Um, not every library and bookshop will stock, but if you request it, I'm sure they could get it in for you. Uh, and where else does it Online, you can access things there. Sometimes I write for screen, so some of those things would be definitely available online. I also speak at literary events sometimes, like, um, I mean, pre-Covid I was due to speak at Huddersfield Literature Festival. I've also given talks at universities. Hey, look, you're distracting me. Uh, universities and schools and um, homeless shelters, done a lot of teaching there. Um, to help people engage with the arts through creative storytelling. So the types of art forms I cover would be prose in books, so short stories, novels, uh, comics and graphic novels and screen. And I recently got my first gig in tabletop game writing which is very exciting for me. So about 10 to 12 years I've been <laughs> I've been uh, writing stories professionally uh, and that's not, not always earn a living um, so you can there are many income streams for writers as well as the, the, the creative work itself so you know teaching is another one I do a lot of teaching and creative writing but also writing um, for corporate videos and things like that so I write and direct corporate videos as another side of the work that I do um, and uh, writing copy, writing for blogs, writing um, different contributions f where people need words basically. <laughs> All of those things can bring you an income as a writer and because you are working freelance for yourself quite a lot it's quite important to have lots of different means of earning a living because um, it's not always going to be the fun creative stuff. Where did I train and learn my art? So I when I was in school, I was always loved English as a lover of books and reading and writing. That was always going to be something that I uh, did well in because I was dedicated a lot of time to it. Um, and I then studied it at A level, and then in university, I felt like I'd done a lot of English, and I wanted to be able to bring an extra layer of depth and uh, reflection on the world and human uh, people people are what fascinate me in telling stories and to be able to think deeply about the human experience and what why we're all here um, in, in a more academic way meant that I decided to take a degree in philosophy and that completely changed to be honest probably my life because uh, it was so amazing to spend such a large amount of time thinking about thinking really deeply about everything <laughs> um, and uh, some of the texts I studied and um, the way that things are written in philosophy and the themes that come out I always draw on now in my own work in my creative storytelling there's always a philosophical underpinning to the stories that I write there's a, a, a depth there that I think is important when you're writing stories that there's something more a reader can take from it if they want on the surface, it always needs to work as an entertaining piece of work. But should a reader want to think more about it, there are themes and metaphors and um, imagery 
within those stories that hint at something deeper and a reflection on the human experience. And that all came about through studying philosophy and that's really honed the style in which I write and the things that I like to write about. Um, so after I graduated, I set up a filmmaking company with some of the people that I went to uni with um, and we made short films and documentaries and joining the Writers Guild was a massive milestone for me and um, if you are going to pursue writing as a career I definitely suggest joining the Guild. Um, it's the trade union for writers in the UK and that then allowed me to enter uh, social circles of other writers that were further ahead in their careers than me but that could support me on that journey and the Writers Guild have been amazing for that. I also trained as a script reader with Northwest Vision and Media. That was the regional screen agency for the Northwest, um, and that gave me that meant I was reading a lot of film scripts and analysing a lot of film scripts, which really helped me to then write better film scripts and improve my writing generally. Um, I then founded a charity called the Homeless Film Festival, where I used a lot of what I'd learned to help vulnerable and homeless people and refugees tell stories through film uh, and so I would lead classes in homeless shelters where uh, marginalised people could tell stories, not necessarily their own story but the, the, um, the capacity to create art and to tell stories and to be creative is a uniquely human thing and when you're in a marginalised situation and you can't do that it's very dehumanising and so to just have a platform where you can explore your creativity is such an important part of what makes you, you. So that's why I feel like the creative arts, be it storytelling or um, any sort of art, um, it, it is vital for all people, whatever stage in life you're at, whatever your circumstance, just to access that part of your brain that is uniquely human and connect with that is very meaningful. So I set up the Homeless Film Festival to allow people to do that. Um, and my colleagues in the film company helped me to get that off the ground. And um, we would then help the homeless people and the marginalised people to make the films that they'd written and put on those films in a festival every two years showing those films along with films submitted by other organisations worldwide doing similar things to us. That was a fantastic thing to set up and I'm very proud that I was part of that. What I found was that it was consuming all my time, so chairing the charity and trying to pull it together and make it into something that was economically <laughs> make it into something that was economically viable um, completely consumed all of my time and I wasn't achieving anything with my own creative writing. So I stepped back from that and uh, when I moved to London in around 2013 uh, and just pursued my own writing and I kept teaching creative writing in um, St Mungo's um, College for Marginalised People. I then managed to get Arts Council funding to um, work with the British Library to create a collection of short stories, Dead Men's Teeth, and for this I used um, original historical documents from the library archives, hundreds of years old, you can get them out and um, or open these documents that they all smell like wood smoke because they're so old and they must have been written in an environment where all the lighting you had was fire so everything smells of smoke um, it's quite amazing I definitely recommend getting things out of the British Library archives is massively inspiring for creative writing so I used strange and, and uh, rare historical documents to inspire pieces of creative short storytelling uh, and that was funded by the Arts Council, supported by the British Library, and we brought it out with a series of readings, dramatic readings with actors um, at venues around London. I have a spider. Do you? Dad is just making a film. Do you want to? Do you want to come and say hello? I stole it on the nettle. Oh no! I really want a cape. You need your cape, do you? Can I just finish doing this bit of film? Yeah, so the Dead Men's Teeth book, uh, that came out in 2014 um, and the National Trust then asked if I would do a similar thing for one of their castles down in, down in Kent 
Um, so I said I would, but I wanted to do it as a graphic novel because I wanted to expand my uh, portfolio into different writing crafts because I'm interested in a lot of different methods of telling stories through writing. Um, and they were happy to support this and I got some Arts Council funding again and then No Brow Press, the publisher, joined the project um, and they assigned some fantastic artists to work on the book. And I spent four months living in the castle in Kent writing the book. That was a fantastic experience. Um, researching firsthand, on site, the stories of the different lives of people that lived at the castle from the Middle, e Middle Ages right up to now. Um, and, uh, and then the artist drew those scripts that I wrote and the book came out in 2017. And it was nominated for an Eisner Award in 2018, which was a massive step for my career, because an Eisner Award is one of the one of the biggest awards in the comics industry. Um, and I was very proud to have the work nominated. Um, I then managed to get some funding to um, go out to Finland to create a graphic novel called Elaman Maki, which means the Hill of Life. There, I spent some time in a Finnish wilderness at the site of an old mental health sanatorium that was broadly the location and the subject of the story. And that was an amazing project. I worked with a very talented artist called Emi Nieminen. Uh, and we're still working on that. I haven't, it was still still trying to get uh, that published and get it out there, but it's been an amazing project. And we had a guide out there called Erka, who lives out there, um, philosopher. And he uh, also makes uh, a game called Unreal World, uh, which is about survival in the Finnish wilderness. Um, and together we walked around and told stories and listened to the Urkas' uh, uh, account of the folklore and history associated with the area. Um, and I then went to the Finnish archives in Helsinki, found old newspaper clippings from a hundred years ago from the area of the sanatorium and it was an amazing project to work on, so I'll, I'll give you some links to look at some of the stuff from that as well. Uh, I've got a short film that we've just, just finished, which was my first directorial piece. So I wrote and directed a short film about limb amputation, and that's gone into film festivals at the moment, going into film festivals at the moment. Um, so fingers crossed that gets picked up for some things. Um, and I recently got my first gig in games writing uh, for tabletop games, uh, RPG role-playing games. I'll be writing a Wild West Gunslinger class for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition as a supplement uh, for different characters, which will be interesting. Um, and I'm working on that right now. I'm not an organisation, so I don't have staff and freelancers working for me, but I do work with other freelancers, particularly when it comes to um, graphic novels where you're working with artists um, or in the games writing, game designers and artists as well, doing the artwork for the games. Um, and then in film, uh, working with a huge number of people um, who are doing lighting, the camera work, the actors, the makeup, the sound design. There's a huge number of people working in when you, when you write a film script uh, and directors. Um, but I wouldn't say that I work with them day to day. So, let's, uh, I'll give you a little tour of my desk. <laughs> so, we've got a bookshelf shared between myself and my son. So we've got some children's books in there as well. Um, over here, let's see. We've got hard drives for keeping uh, video work on. This is a Zoom H4n. This is a really good piece of recording equipment. Um, I would suggest that if you are going to like interview people as part of your research, recording those interviews can be a fantastic piece of content to listen to afterwards. Up here we've got all notes of stories that I'm working on, so that helps me to structure the stories. That goes all around the room. So there I would lay out the main things happening in the story uh, with dividers after each chunk of time. Then we've got creative book for creative writing. General scruffy notepad for any sort of work. 
Um, some incense, <laughs> pens, uh, keyboard, laptop, headphones. Up oh, Northern Earth, one of my favourite magazines for star inspiration. Uh, Writers Guild stuff. These are my some druid oracle animals that are. Animals in a story I'm telling, characters in a story I'm telling, just to have them there to remind me, and a to-do list. And that is about it. Thank you for coming to join me in my workspace today. I hope it's been interesting for you, and I hope that you pursue careers in writing, because it's very fulfilling. Enjoy exploring your creativity, and bye.